Hello, I'm Maria Ressa. In this episode of Talk Thursday, we talk to Senator TJ Gingona and his fight for cyber freedom. He is the only senator, the lone voice, who opposed the controversial Cybercrime Prevention Act of 2012, which took effect on October 3 this week. In a thought leader's piece for Rappler, Gingona called and dangerous and says it takes a fatal step back to archaic policies that cannot be made to apply in the modern world. Senator Ngona, thank you so much for coming to talk. Thank you for having me. Thank you. What is wrong with this law? Well, first of all, it infringes on the the right of citizens to to express themselves. Uh, it 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 uh, it gives vast it gives vast uh, discretionary powers on the state to determine uh, what is uh, libelous, what is not, and to seize. For example, the, the provision having the Secretary of Justice determine if something is a violative of the law and have it seized. Yes. And you know. Have it seized as in take it down, right? Have it seized as in yeah. blocking it so that yes. you don't have access to it or Correct. even nobody has access to it. And in our constitution, uh, when you have a seizure, a warrant for seizure, mm -hmm. or search, mm -hmm. search and seizure, it's determined by the judge. In this case, it's determined by the DOJ okay. secretary. Right. Second, the ground is probable cause. Mm -hmm. Here, it's just prima facie, which means on face value, right. which means in the opinion of the Secretary of Justice. Correct. So, the, the Secretary of Justice is, as Attorney Dicini also said, this judge, jury, and executioner, no? Yeah. And uh, that is vast powers. And mind you, in the law, there is no time limit for the seizure. Compare it to the anti-money laundering law, which gives uh, the state the power to freeze your account. Yes. Upon, upon uh, order by the court. Order by the court. And it has a period only of 20 days to freeze. Dito, in this new law, walang period for seizure. So it can go on ad infinitum. Um, freedom of speech, freedom of expression. Some, some lawyers have also said double jeopardy. Could you explain that? Double jeopardy, because um, you can be prosecuted under the, the revised, revised penal, penal code, code, which is the law prior to the anti-cybercrime law, and also under the cybercrime law. And in that case, that violates the constitutional pr principle and provision that no one can be prosecuted and uh, be made to answer for the same crime Correct. twice. Correct. Which is common sense, right? Diba? Just the way you explain it, this law seems ill-conceived. Why were Hodgepodge? You, hodgepodge, okay. Why were you the sole voice against it? Uh, I, I think, uh, I, I, I really don't know, but what, what I... But I, I do remember I, was, I voted no against it. Yes. And I also ventured some explanation of my vote. Some of the anger online stems from the fact that it seemed to have snuck up on people. I mean, how did you how know was what this was, law what was crystal clear to me when, when we had a forum with uh, some netizens and bloggers was that there was no adequate and proper consultation. And why, why do I say clear? Because you could feel the emotion. Yes. Why were we not consulted? Why did we not know about it? Yes. So that is one, one aspect that I think we should improve in the future. What process did this bill go through in order to become a law? Well, the usual process. It, 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 it uh, went through a public hearing, committee hearing. Yes. And then after that, committee report and went to plenary and then uh, interpolation and voting and uh, at that point yeah that's that's where the on the third reading that is where we had the voting and uh, I found myself the lone person dissenting and st I stated categorically categorically on record that this law is unconstitutional yes that we did see that on the record a, a question from social media Senator Gingona from at Chili Medley Chili Medley by the way is the is the woman who, when Senator Tito Soto was speaking, actually plugged his speech into Google and then came out with, this is his third time, and then came out with the fact that it was a, a Tagalog translation of Robert Kennedy's okay. speech. So, actually, Medley, thank you for joining us. If you have any questions, uh, anyone else on social media, please tweet them to us.
Her question is, why did Senator Gingona not object to the libel clause when it was inserted during the period of amendments? Okay, when the libel clause was there, um, it just had the provision that the, the, the law will be subject to libel as defined by uh, the revised penal code. Okay, now at that point we saw it and my staff advised me that that you already can file a libel case against the person online because of the case of Yuchenko. Correct. If, if you remember, there was a group of uh, parents who owned, who owned some pre need plans under Pacific plans. Right. And they, they had something went wrong, they didn't get what they should have gotten, and they put up a website, and Yuchenko sued them. Uh, the Supreme Court said, yes, you can file. Uh, libel if it's all done online using the, the, the penal code. So, status quo. That yes. was status quo. So, when we saw that provision, that was status quo. Uh, what was not there was that provision that made it uh, one degree higher if you use the a, a, a pen, a, if one degree higher penalty yeah. if you use the online uh, method, which is the net, no? the, the computer method. That was not there. When did this? When did the insertion happen? It was not in the third reading. So, I would suppose it would be on the bicam. That's what some of the. Let's call it an amendment. Okay, <laughs> it sounds more official. <laughs> <laughs> Is that normal? Um, the the way I'd answer it is this way. The purpose of the BICAM is to, remember, when you have legislation, you have a bill passed by the House of Representatives and the Senate. Yes. And the purpose of a BICAM is to, uh, what do you call that, you, you merge the, the conflicting provisions, if there are any yes. of the two versions, the yes. House and the Senate, and come up with a, a, with a unified version. Correct. Okay. You cannot, you cannot legislate using the BICAM because it has to have provisions that are already there. What happens now that there were uh, amendments during the BICAM? Well, I would say it's at this point, it's already with the Supreme Court. And I'm very, very, I feel very strongly, very, very confident that it will be declared, those provisions which are oppressive will be declared unconstitutional. Why do you think the Supreme Court didn't issue a TRO for it? They wanted more time to study it. That's what they said. So yes. we have to take it at their face value. Um, a question from at Rees everywhere. Would you say parts of the cybercrime law are a form of e-martial law? Yes. Yes. Which parts? Well, uh, the parts, like, the, like for example, that the part that uh, the DOJ secretary can Correct. determine. No? Yes. When your when your data will be seized, that's your property. Yes. That's your intellectual property, and they have the right to seize it indefinitely. Yes. Yes. And uh, I was I was I was around during the martial law. I was still a student. Yes. But I do remember how abusive it was. Just give them small excuse, small legal excuse, yes. then they can use the law against you. Senator Gagona, you were there through the entire process. Again, part of what people are asking for now is how could this have happened with, you know, the, we know that the senators have gone through a full, legislators have gone through the corona impeachment trial and everyone was there hard, working hard. But now people are looking for accountability in this. How could such a flawed law have passed through all of the esteemed senators. Yes, I, I think the way, the way to look at it would be on the positive side maybe. Please. Instead of how could, how can we make sure that this doesn't happen again? How can we make sure You have that to say, the glass is half full, sure. <laughs> how, how, how can we make sure? Because first, the insertion in the bicam. Amendment. Um, okay, the <laughs> amendment, <laughs> the amendment in the, in the bicam, which is, is not orthodox. Um, so the, that goes to the Supreme Court. What else could be done better? Well, uh, we were yes, we were talking about it, and uh, we meaning you know friends, and and, and one of the things we, we would like to pass, uh, I'd like to file on Monday next week, is the what we call the crowdsourcing law. 
uh, where whenever you have a law, you post it on the net and ask everyone to give your comments. It's basically a town, calling a town hall meeting. But instead of a physical town hall meeting, it's, it's done on, on the net. Yes. And this will be very, very democratizing because, you know, if it's, if it's a committee hearing, the regular, it's a physical committee hearing. So if it's done in Metro Manila, it's hard for those people in Mindanao Correct. to come over or Correct. in the Visayas to come over. It, it's, it's expensive. So. Yes. But because of the crowdsourcing act that we will file, someone in Pagudpud, Ilocos Norte, and someone in Polomolok, South Cotabato can participate meaningfully. Oh, this is, that's fantastic. Um, but you are also one of the most internet savvy among the senators. Um, what are the chances something like this can happen? I think with this experience, yes. I, I don't see how they can... It would be helpful, wouldn't it? Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Remember, <clears throat> the, the trend towards modernity and democracies is transparency, yes. openness. Yes. And how can you say that you're not in favor of crowdsourcing? If, if, if. Reykjavik crowdsourced its constitution yes, yes, in 2010, yes, yes, right? Yes, the amendments, um, yes. So we're talking about roughly the internet penetration rate, 33 million, and then uh, 94, 95% are on Facebook. I mean, so you, you, this is automatically broadening the base of consultation for, for a law. Correct, correct. Um, but again, you're looking half full. Sure, this is fantastic for the future, but many people are still going back to, you know, this particular legislation in terms of, um, I'll go specifically to Senator Soto. He told the BBC that, uh, he admitted he included the, the libel, the provisions. Um, and he, he didn't say insertion, he did say amendment. <laughs> okay. Um, but then he reversed his position in another interview. Is this something that the senators talk about? Well, I think he's the best person to, to really answer it. And might be might be incumbent on your part, in the spirit of openness, to invite him over. We we have actually. <laughs> we have. <laughs> so that's, um, how do you, given the the different technical capacities of each of the lawmakers, how do you take them to the age of the internet? I mean, when you look at the law and the way it's written, it's patchy. It's a patchwork piece of of legislation and it seems like there's a lack of understanding of the way the internet and social media in particular works. How do you get that kind of, of, of greater knowledge? Well yes, admittedly at the start it seems, uh, but after you read it the second time, the third time, it's pretty clear, especially the, the, the martial law provisions that, where they can seize and surveillance. Yes. Upon due course by the police, no? who determines due course, sila lang, no? um, it's pretty clear that the issues are really more legal and constitutional, fundamental issues which infringe on, on the rights of individuals. This becomes now the first test case for a new Supreme Court Chief Justice and, and the Supreme Court she leads, right? And the institution. The institution. The institution itself. Um, what do you think, from what you know of, of uh, our new Chief Justice, um, what do you think will be the inclination? Well, they are the final arbiter of the Constitution. They're the final defender. They're, they're the ones who say, yes, it is violative. Remember, a Constitution is a contract between the people and their government. And they, the only one that can say, that, yes, the government has violated this contract is the, the Supreme Court. Supreme and Court. I think, I have full faith and confidence in our Supreme Court.